So hi everybody, welcome to my road to Historic Brawl. Um, it's been a very long time since I've played uh, Historic Brawl. Uh, last time I played was sort of when Kinnon was around, and still Kinnon is very dominant. Um, but I decided to like try something new, and I started seeing that over the last few weeks, uh, given the Alchemy Brothers War release, there's this new card called Rusko Clockmaker. He's a legendary creature, human artificer. He's a 3-3. He is two colorless and a blue and a black for a card that reads, When Rusko Clockmaker enters the battlefield, conjure a card named Midnight Clock onto the battlefield. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an hour counter on each permanent you control named Midnight Clock. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And of course, uh, he conjures, meaning that he just basically plays the card once he enters the battlefield, called Midnight Clock, which is an old uh, Throne of the Drain card, which I think I actually have a physical copy lying somewhere around because it's a blue card. And I thought it was pretty neat when it came out, but in practice, it was always very slow in Commander. And although you probably get it off, like it will only happen once. But this is a card that reads, it's a two card that's in a blue for an artifact that you can tap it and it adds a blue. So it's a, it's a, a standard matter rock. Um, for two colorless and a blue, Without tapping it, you can put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. And at the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour clock on Midnight Clock. And whenever the 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw 7 cards, and then exile Midnight Clock. So, I realize that Rusko Clockmaker is ridiculously strong. It's busted as all hell. You might think that from initial viewing, it doesn't seem that strong. It's a four mana card, you know, you, you get to put uh, hour counters when you cast non-creature spells, which is pretty advantageous for a control build, which is what Demir is, generally. Um, and the extra added bonus of losing one life and getting one life, you know, it's pretty cool. But, you know, you might not be able to see the scope of how powerful this card is. This basically acts like a Golos. Golos, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why it was banned, it was because this card, Golos, when it entered the battlefield, it would allow you to get a land that enter tapped from the deck to the field. So, in in essence, it would make the commander tax be one less every time you cast it. So, instead of being like a Golos that costs later seven mana, it would cost six because you already ramped one mana upon its arrival. Same thing with Rusko. So, Rusko... <laughs> When he enters the battlefield, he gives you a free mana rock that lasts six turns on the battlefield. It's a card that essentially cuts down its commander tax by one. And since it's entered the battlefield, you can blink it with stuff like Displacer Kitten, which has been run on this deck. Or if you want to use Tassa's Deep Dwelling, you can also blink it at the end at the end phase. So when you start blinking this stupid card over and over again with a plethora of options you have at your disposal, uh, you start building a, uh, an army of midnight clocks that all cut cut up and cut down, and on the 12th uh, hour counter, you get to shuffle everything back up. Since alchemy allows you to have a bunch of cards that you can conjure and you can uh, create out of thin air with stuff like Oracle of Alpha, which when you enter the battlefield, you can conjure the Power Knight into the library, and you can use the Power Knight. And then if it goes to the graveyard, you're thinking, well, you can't use it again. Well, no matter, because your Midnight Clocks, when it strikes 12, you'll put everything back up again, and you'll reuse everything. So you have, essentially, a never-ending deck that keeps replacing its deck. So you never run out of cards, and it's a control build that just ultimately will outrun and destroy every opponent you come up with. You know, you run stuff like Paradox Engine, with which is an artifact uh, that whenever you cast a spell, untap your non-land permits, meaning you can untap all your midnight clocks, and you start looping. There's also Tome of the Infinite, which you can round conjure a random card from the Tome of Infinite spellbooks into your hand, perpetually gaining when you spend, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any card to cast a spell. So the problem is that you have Tome of the Infinite, you have a bunch of uh, midnight clocks, or even Moxin at that point, you keep untapping and retapping, and you can just infinitely um, cast everything. <laughs> cast anything. It becomes kind of insane. The deck just has a plethora of counter spells. You run Tailsend to counter the commanders. You run 
the new card, Wash Away, because you get to counter for one mana. Uh, a counter target spell that wasn't cast from the owner's hand. You have Dark Ritual to be able to cast Rusko in turn two. You have Inquisitions. You have Tot Seizes. You have Essence Flux, where you have that one mana left over from Rusko when you cast him. You'll be able to defend him at least once because you'll be able to blink him out of existence from a potential removal spell. You run Key of the Archive, which will let you draft cards and use them. You, the only other creature, the only few other creatures that you run are Earth Type Resurrected because you want to be able to have some removal and some uh, countering on a stick. You have Shieldred because it's just way too strong, and you know you'll be drawing like crazy once the deck gets going. Um, you have Displacer Kitten, obviously we mentioned it before because you start blinking Rusko and you start getting more value, more Midnight Clocks onto the battlefield. You run your Narset. Part of Reveals, because, you know, if you actually get away with doing a Commit to Memory, which this deck also runs, uh, you basically get to Windfall your opponent. Or you actually can play actual Windfall, thanks to Oracle of the Alpha. Uh, this deck is pretty insane, it's pretty strong, it's pretty busted, and we're just going to play a few games, so let's see how this goes. I like control strategies, even though there's a lot of alchemy cards that I am not too privy of. And they are pretty confusing and new to me, so... We'll, we'll figure it out. It's a great hand. It's a freaking amazing hand. So I'm gonna keep. Oh, that's good already. I'm gonna get some lands out of that. I have pretty good stuff too. Thought sees early on is pretty solid, so I'm just gonna use Thought sees and see what he has up his sleeve. Runus crap! Whoa, that's a this is a this is a deck. I like this already. This is this is fun. Uh, should I ruin his plans of doing Runus crab? Clearly, this deck is not exactly what I thought it would be. But um, Runus crab is a pretty interesting magic card. I kind of wanna yeah sure I'll let him mill. Mill is fun. I want him to mill. Maybe he'll help me get my stuff in order. He already played wrong because he played the... No, well, we'll see. Okay, so let's uh, let's get the snow-covered mountain. Let's get the cold steel heart. Gonna put it on blue. I need my blue source. He's obviously not gonna do Sika yet. Great. So I'm hold off from summoning Rusko, even though it would have been great. I'm just gonna get my blue source. Let's get a blue island. There we go. Um, I have drowned from the lock, so that's gonna be good. Encounter something of two or less, or I can destroy something of two or less, but I'm fine. I don't need to go crazy right now. Just need some lands. Hopefully, he'll get me some lands. Sure. Okay. Sure. I need a land right now. I did not get the land, but it's fine because this guy's going to get me a land, so it'll be okay. <sighs> this guy's pretty insane. The fact that he just produces a mana rock. Every, every time he's casted, or every time he's blinked, because it's an enter the battlefield trigger, not a cast trigger, makes him very strong. I'm guessing he's looking at his options and seeing if he's going to destroy my stuff. He did not destroy anything. I'm just going to play this. Um, I think I'm going to play a Paradox Engine. It's a pretty solid card. Let me see Teferi for a second. Um, I think Teferi might be better. Although... It's going to leave me on one, which I think is fine because Sika is going to come out and I'm just going to counter Wash Away. So I think the fairy for starters is going to be pretty solid. And he's going to get my uh, triggers up, although he might have a counter. Oh, that's great. He wasted the counter there. Um, I almost want to do an impulse, but I, I'm not going to do it. That's fine. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to keep my dispels for stuff that I actually need. I will attack, though. And he has something else. Well, that's great. Does not seem like he has anything else. Oh, he does. Oh, he might have something else. That's great. 
Oh, if he has something else to destroy my Rusko, that's fine with me. Okay, there's nothing. But he thought about it, so maybe there's an answer over there. Oh, he gave up. Yep. It was going to be a little tough, I think. And I was playing horribly, so... Oh, Kethis, the Hidden Hand. He's a pretty strong commander. I like him. In, like, actual commander. He's pretty strong. I like him. Oh, that's cool. Uh, when he enters, the battlefield is tapped. Uh, scry 1. If, if you weren't the starting player, you may untap it. So that's cool. Uh, I think it's a solid hand. Solid keep. It might be a bit slow. But um, the fact that I can stop his commander is pretty solid. So I'm just going to keep it. And I'm going first, so that's good. He's going to play my little tap land here. Tappy land. It's pretty strong. An alchemy card that could actually be a commander. Like an actual magic card. For for some reason, it's just for alchemy. I don't know. So, I guess I need black. A Gilda Lobos is way too expensive. I need lands. Uh, I got Ornithopter of Paradise, too. It's pretty solid. Okay. Oh, Cleric class. Nice. Okay. Oh, Awesome. Um, I'm still gonna play my Cold Steel. I think I'm gonna play it on blue as well. Might bite me in the butt, but I need more blue, I think. Oh, it's so tempting to just do an Oracle of Alpha right now. But I'm hard-pressed to just want to counter his, uh, commander. But I can just, uh, win this protection when it comes down, and it will just not do anything. Um, yeah. In that case, I'm just going to keep ramping. I don't win this protection when it comes down. And that's fine. Perfect. Solid magic card. I'm going to play my little Rusko buddy. And... I'm going to play a little Rusko buddy. And I will win this protection that because I don't want you to get value. And I will pass a turn. Let's see. I definitely want to play this Oracle of the Alpha. It's an amazing alchemy card. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you can conjure the power nine into the deck. And when you attack with this card, you get to just shuffle stuff. Oh, other creatures you control have death touch. And other untapped creatures you control have hexproof. That's great. It's pretty solid. And on top of another target creature or land you control. Cool. Yep, pretty solid card. I wish I had my tails end, but it's fine. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just gonna take the hit. He wants me to block his commander. I'm not gonna let him do that, so. Great. Let's see what else I can do. I can do an Oracle. Start conjuring that power nine. And, you know, let's play the Ornithopter. I still have mana left over for a Tails End, just in case it might be required. I do. I can also crew, which might be something I might do eventually. Yeah, Rusko Clockmaker is disgusting. And I know that I'm playing horrible, but uh, it's just far too strong. Righteous Valkyrie. So, you know, if he starts getting a lot of life, he starts boosting up his creatures. I can't do anything about that, though, because it is not a legendary creature. So, he does have Hexproof, and when he will attack, he'll get the other one. Okay, your opponent's getting gain life. That's fine. I wasn't planning on gaining that much life, sir. I, was, I wanted to gain life, but clearly it's not going to happen. So, sure. I guess you're going to attack with your little 1-1. One -one. That's great. I'm just going to chump block with my zero to look at that. Oh, shit. It has that. Oh, I'm so dumb. It has that touch. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, great. Discover the formula. That's a solid magic card. I think I'm not going to cast it now. I, I am tempted to just do a blood of this. Um, but I want to draw one more land before I do that. I think it's fine for now. I could discover the formula and then go into Blood in the Snow. Or I could Tail Send, depending on whatever he plays. But more than likely, I'm, I think I'm just going to... Let's see. Lands in the battlefield, lands in the graveyard can be the target. Your opponent can play cards from your graveyard. That is fine. He will attack probably with everything. Oh, he's going to level 2. 
So level two, whenever you gain life, you put counters on creatures. And nothing has life link, so at least I'm safe for now. He will attack with probably everything. He's being very precautious. Um, it's still five damage. I think I can take that. That's fine. I am not going to block because they have Death Touch because I made a mistake and attacked. Again, guys, I haven't played in a while. I'm just going to discard the formula. It's solid. Um, I'm going to Ancestral Recall. I'll target myself. I'm going to draw a bunch more cards. This is insane. Uh, great. I drew um, Vile Duplication. I did a Drowned Catacomb, I have a Trophy Mage, Memory Lapse, a Tails End, and the Snow. Solid magic cards, boom. It is great, it's awesome. Um, I'm at 9, I can do a Blood on the Snow right now, and I can reanimate my creature again. And I do have enough left over for a Tails End, so I think I'm just going to have Blood on the Snow. I'll destroy all creatures. I totally forgot that I won't be able to reanimate my creature. <sighs> I mean, I do have one snow, two snow. I don't have enough snow to reanimate my my Rusko, so maybe not. I have to do it. I have to. I need to definitely do this. I will take action and move my commander to the command zone. He will get that back. Let's see. Um, I cannot play that because I want to be able to... Yep, so we're just going to pass a turn. At least I got the Ornithopter. So at least I got something back. But I'm just going to counter that when it comes back down again. Okay, never mind. He's just going to boost up his... Cleric class, which is great. Pretty strong. He gets to reanimate something for free. I do, cannot answer that, so I'm just going to let it resolve. Oh, I could have definitely done that. Yeah, I could have I could have answered. <sighs> it was a trigger ability. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't played in a while. Um, since I have leftover mana, I think I will put an hour on midnight. Awesome. I got a Mox Shit. I'm gonna play it. Got this. Oh, that would have been a nice little freebie over there. And I did not do anything about that. It's three or less. That's a lot more. I will play another Rusko. Just getting. Let's start getting some more value. More value, guys. A lot of value. I will play an Arcane Signet. Um. Uh, Let's see how much mana I have. I can do a solve the equation. Uh, okay, I have, I have mana for that. I can do a solve the equation too if need be. I can do a solve the equation. I can conjure something from his graveyard to my side of the field, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, what could I look for that might help me out in a pickle? Something that costs one mana, I suppose. Everything's in the deck. I only removed the Midnight Clock. Um, I mean, I can just solve the equation next turn for something that I might, not, I might need. I want to... I feel like I want to do this. So I'm just going to Thought Erasure and see something in his hand and pluck it out. Revitalize. Okay, that's pretty strong. Uh, during each of your combats, double. And then when he deals combat damage, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to destroy this. Oh, the tail send on the top. Awesome. I wish I could just pluck it, but I can't. So, it's fine. I... I'll just solve the equation for whatever I need. Yeah, Rusko's insane in value. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. All the stuff that it can do. That's fine. Right now, the Shadow's Verdict seems to be filled with value. 
sure I can't reanimate my Rusko, but you know, that's fine. That's fine. You put one one counters on there. That's fine. That's fine. You attack for four. That's interesting. Um, I could block. It doesn't. I'm gonna croup. Going to jump block over here. And it'll die. Because that does not have that touch. And I think he forgot about my Cultivator's Quran. So that's great. good for me. I don't know if he's going to... Oh, he's going to keep playing. Okay, cool. Um, then I'm just going to go to my turn. Awesome. Going to get another counter on Midnight Clock. I'm going to get my Tails End on my hand. Which is great. Um... I could solve the equation, but I really don't care. His hand is pretty lackluster. So I'm just going to play an Immortal Sun. I'm just going to keep being aggressive on the board. Um, I I don't think he has many outs. It's it's getting pretty dire for him. So I'm just going to pass the turn. I, I have the game pretty locked up. I just need to find the other combo pieces that I need. And yeah, it'll be done. Vitalize is pretty solid. I'm just gonna let him <laughs> gain some life, make some counters. It still won't be enough. He won't be able to attack. Gain some life. It's gonna trigger again. Gain another life. He gets another counter. I guess he's trying to boost his veteran to the point where goes past my 5-5. Five five. It's obviously going to attack. So in that instance, I guess I can just use the leftover mana to boost the uh, Midnight Clock. I could do it again. I'm just going to like accelerate a little bit the Midnight Clock. I'm going to go to my turn. This goes up to 9. I'm going to draw an additional card, which is excellent. I have a counter spell too. And I have an Infernal Grasp, just in case he goes nutty and does something crazy. Um, I think that we're pretty good. I'm going to solve the equation, try to find some spell that actually does something. Okay, let's see what I can get. I can discover the formula again. I can Rivers Rebuke. And reset his board again. I can time warp for an extra turn. Oh, although the time warp won't do much. I do have the time twister in my deck. I have a time walk, an extra cheap time walk. Um, trying to figure out what is the best thing I could do. Oh, well, time warp for two makes me draw two cards. So at least there's that. I'm seeing Ancestral Recall too. I can draw three cards out of that. Try to find more answers. Um, yeah, I think I might just do, just because I like drawing a lot, I'm just going to take the Ancestral Recall. I'm going to draw another card. I'm going to draw three cards. Got a little Trophy Mage. Got Snow Cover Land. I'm just going to play this Trophy Mage. See what I get. Sure. Let's get a Tome of the Infinite. Um, let's do an Infernal Grasp. Let's destroy this little thing. Yeah, it's just kind of insane. I don't know. I, I, it's pretty nutty, all the things this, is, this card's doing. Oh, I reset it. <laughs> Okay, let's see what I got. Oh, I got a Displacer Kitten. Okay, so now is where the fun begins because now Displacer Kitten can allow me to just keep bouncing Rusko and getting more value. Just playing some weird freaking solitaire at this point. I guess I could balance the Trophy Mage, but I'm just going to do another Rusko trigger. It becomes kind of insane. I am just going to do nothing else. I, I could Rivers Rebuke and restart, return all his non-land permanents. 
But I think I I think I'll just keep it as is. I'm just gonna go next and I'm just going to a battle. I'm just gonna attack with my little army top tier just for one. Just to demonstrate, you know, I got damage, I can do stuff. This is kind of insane. Kind of insane. It's so nutty that I couldn't even keep track of my own midnight clock because I wanted to do something to that Kethis, but I can obviously just um just keep looping. The beautiful thing about this is that you keep your power nine in your deck, and I totally forgot about that. I thought those cards got exiled after use, but they don't. Um no, oh, it's gonna do a bunch of one ones. That's great, because uh, my River's Rebuke will come in handy right now. And he's going all in on his board. And I think I think the River's Rebuke is going to be the card that makes him um, quit. He's just not going to want to play anymore. I think it's pretty obvious. I was going to, like, put one more counter on this thing. And I'm just going to put another one. Just all this left over mana must be, used, must be put to some use, so... I'm going to go to my turn. I'm going to get more counters on that. The thing is, I'm going to play this Inventor's Fairland, I think. Oh, my God. I got Tasa. I keep blinking like a maniac. Oh, my God. This is too too nutty. This is too nutty, man. I can't even keep up with the amount of value this thing has. You know, you're in step exile on another creature. I can keep casting. I can keep playing my, my Rusko. It becomes insane. Um, he's obviously going to quit after this. I, I think. I think he's just going to quit. He won't be able to want to play this. This is a ridiculous game of magic. Let me keep blinking, Rusko. Yeah, just bounce everything to your hand. River's Rebuke is, is kind of crazy. Yep. Sure, gain all the life you want. Resolve all, man. All your life back. Just gonna play uh, another Oracle Alpha. I get to loop Power 9 back into my deck. I'm never gonna run out of resources, as you can clearly see. Just gonna attack with everything. Yeah, this is uh, insane. I don't know how you can uh, keep track of this. It goes crazy. Get a blinking Rusko. Yeah, keep conjuring clocks, because, you know. You just gotta use, gotta put your mana to use. <sighs> yeah, and there you go. He quits. Uh, he can't keep up. This is this is insane. This is this deck is 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 ridiculous, ridiculous deck. Yeah, no, it's not fun. Uh, okay, so I'm playing Rusko against Rusko. Uh, I have a decent hand. It's not super busted. Um, I kind of wanna free Mulligan and see what I get. Um, slightly worse hand, but, you know, I got a Dispel, I got a Trophy Mage, so I'll keep it. Problem is that we're good playing against a Rusko, so he's going to be able to go off probably faster than me. We'll see how this goes. Play a Swamp and Pass. I'm going to play a Swamp and Pass. So he's playing Fair Magic. He's not even ramping. Oh, he doesn't have an extra mana. That is a problem for him. Well, we're going to keep playing then. I'm going to play a Drowned Catacomb. And I might play a Wish Call Talisman. I'm going to pass a turn. Let's see if he draws his third land. It does not seem like he drew land. Oh, my God. He stayed with a two-lander. Oh, he did a Disperse. I mean, sure. I'll let him resolve the Disperse. It's fine. I know he needs to waste the card anyways. So now I get to play my little Rusko, buddy. Rusko enters the battlefield. And I have my Midnight Clock. And I'm going to start... Counting down. Counting up, I mean. I have a Dispel, just in case he has a go for the throat or something similar. He clearly is completely mana screwed, so this is going to be a fantastic game of Magic today. I... Ah, that was... That sucks. I mean, I wanted to see the mirror match go on a little more fair, but yeah. Uh, that, that sucked. Okay, I'm playing Ruscom against Trelasara Moon Dancer. That'll be interesting. Let's see. Um, I go first. I I have my my mana. That's solid, but it's not a lot of interaction, I guess. Uh, I do have early ramp, so I guess I can do a turn three. Um, Rusko. Um, I'm going first, so sure. Let's go ahead. Let's do that. I'll play my Jewari tapped. 
Uh, let me give him a hello. Oh, he's playing a nice little bird. I don't know what this commander does. Uh, when we regain life, put a 1-1 counter into Sarah, Moon Dash, or Scry 1. That's pretty solid, actually. That's pretty good. Um, oh, I'm going to play my second land. I'm going to play Colossal Steel Heart. Cold Steel Heart on black. He played a Fountain of Rule on the beginning. Okay, gain one life. And you can tap three to sacrifice it and draw a card. And he's also ramping. It's pretty solid. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play my third land. Uh, let's play this for black. I'm going to play my Rusko buddy. going to get my Midnight Clock. Just in case I need to blink it. It's going to be great. going to be good all time. <sighs> great that I have... Uh, Elspeth's Nightmare, because if he casts his commander, which I'm pretty sure he's going to do next turn, this turn, I will be able to destroy it outright. Yep. He's going to get a bunch of triggers there, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. He'll just get to cast it again. Yep. He gets to scry one. Put it on the bottom. That's good. Playing a Charming Prince. That's good. I'm pretty sure he's probably going to gain life. Let's see. Or he might blink his Prosperous Innkeeper. We're getting the triggers. Getting the plus one, plus one. He scries to the top and he gains three life. He's going to plus one, plus one. He's a five, five right now. I'm glad again that I have this Elphus Nightmare. This is very good. Thankfully, he won't be able to attack, so it is my turn. Okay, good. I'm um, getting obscure storefront. That's not amazing, but you know. Okay, land. Going to. Oh, it's power two or less. Oh, that's that sucks. Okay, I didn't read that card right. That's fine. I'll just destroy this instead. I'll play my obscure storefront. I'll be able to at least pluck a card from his hand next turn. I do need a Swamp. Gonna get my Swamp. Gonna chip the turn to my opponent. Um, let's see what we can do. Problem is that that Moon Dancer is getting pretty powerful pretty quickly. But thankfully he hasn't drawn land, so this might be beneficial to me. Never mind what I just said, he drew the land. And he has an Angel of Vitality, too, just to add up insult to injury. He's going to hit me for six, and there's nothing I can do about that. So, he's going to take six. No blocks. Okay, it's my turn. Hopefully, I draw something of value. Trophy Mage is pretty solid. I think it's pretty good. Let's see what you got. So, beginning of new, destroy all creatures. That's good. Uh, Pledge of Unity. Uh, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control and then gain life. And then you scry life and then first striker. Obviously, the beginning of new is the most annoying card that he has on his hand. So, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to do this. I could Rivers Rebuke now, but it might be a little too preemptive, a little too early. He is not going to get that much out of it, so I'm just going to Trophy Mage and try to keep ramping a little bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Before the inevitable happens. I could get a Relic of the Legends, which makes me get an extra mana out of my value. Or I can get another Midnight Clock and start the thing going. Or, you know, even, I can even take a Tome of the Infinite, which... Might be useful useful for the next turn, so I would like I would like to ramp. Let's just ramp. Let's just ramp. Let's just play it. And I think that's it for this turn. I'm gonna get a, a beating this turn, but after that I think it'll be fine. So we'll see. Good thing is he's running out of resources. Basically, he just has a bunch of life gain stuff in his hand, so he is able to scry so let's see if he keeps the thing on top might be something useful it is useful so he kept it on top it's just a land okay good it's seemingly going for the kill okay went to the bottom okay and he's going to scry too so he's out of cards that's great for me 
Got to rebuild the whole board right up again after the, this big hit. I'm going to get 14 points of damage, but I think that's totally fine. Well, he might attack with everything. I mean, if he attacks for everything, it's fine. One top and one bottom. That's good. Okay. Okay, he didn't attack with the Charming Prince. Good. So it's only 14 damage. I think I will take it. Mm, I could chump block. Um, I only take five. But I think I'll just keep my creature. Just in case. Am I able to blink it or something? Who knows? I mean, I can blink it if I want to. Um, I will blink the Trophy Mage, though. Let's see. On our Binlight Clock. Awesome. Exile the opponent's library. So let's play my Mind Stone. And let's play River's Rebuke. Targeting the opponent. Bounce everything out of there, buddy. It's a little too much. A little too much. I'll go next. Attack with everything. I'm gonna end the turn. Gonna get my 11th Midnight Clock counter. And the good thing about this Relic of Legends is that I can just blink my Rusko right before I lose my cards. And just get another Midnight Clock out of this. So it'll be worth it. It's gonna be pretty valuable. It'll just take a turn to rebuild. I'm gonna at least get a 3 3 out of it because it's probably gonna get into life. Yep. He decided to gain the life. He's scrying. Let's see if he keeps the Titan on top. He kept it on top. That's good. I'm gonna Essence Flux because I am going to lose my hand. There you go. Now I got a full fresh hand. And I got another Midnight Clock out of it. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I can Spark Double. I can Witness Protection, which is, I think, exactly what I'm going to do. Start with Witness Protection. Let's target his creature so it loses all abilities, and it's a just a simple 2-2. Um, sure, I can get a creature back. I don't know if I'm going to, but, you know. At least I have Forsaken Crossroads. Let's put it on blue. No, we need some blue. Get to Scry. There's a Brainstorm on top. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, let's get a little Matter Rock over here. And let's... Do I have enough for the Midnight Sun and nothing else? Oof. No, it's a little risky to play a Midnight Sun. So I think I might Spark Double. And yeah, I'm going to Spark Double. Get a second Rusko. And another Midnight Clock. So I have one, two, three, potentially four mana at my disposal. I'm going to ship the turn. Guys, I'm new at this. I'm pretty sure I could have maximized that turn better. And probably gotten the Immortal Sun and something else out of it. And get the counter spell on my hand just in case I needed it. But it's fine. I think he is out of options right now. Because he won't be able to lose his commander unless he has a board wipe of some kind. And if he has a board wipe, I have a counter spell ready to go. So... He's going to become very troublesome for the opponent very quickly. Thing is, he has a lot of redundancy, so... He's able to recoup a lot of the... I'm going to counter that that angel, just because I don't have anything to... F they can block f flying, so... Yeah, so he's going to probably recover a little bit. Not that much, because he's running a lot out of resources very quickly. The good thing is that my Ruskos allow me to... Yep, he's saying good game. I think he gave up. Yep, it was going to be too difficult for him to recover. Okay, I'm going to play against Ramos, Dragon Engine. A solid. Let's see how this goes. Um, I have a two-lander. Um, I do have Jawari, just in case I need my... Other land, that's a little risky keep. I do want to keep it. I do go first, so I guess I'll stay. Obviously, the Mox Amber is completely useless, but I do have my four lands. I mean, I have my three lands and a Mind Stone, just in case. There's a Ramo, so it's going to take a while before it actually hits the field. Uh, I guess I'm going to start by playing this tapped, passing turn. I don't have a key of the Archive. I got a Gildas Lotus. I'm going to have a bunch of mana. Not much to do with that mana, but, you know, it'll be fine. I'm going to play an Inventor's Fair. I'm going to play a Might Stone, Mind Stone, and I don't want to play the Mox Amber, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to pass. So he played a Minion of the Mighty. Um, pretty solid D&D &D card. 
has menace too, so, you know. Oh, he decided to... Okay, awesome. So I'm just going to play my Rusko. Okay, got my Midnight Clock. I'm not going to play the Mox Amber, just because there's no usage right now for it. So we're going to pass a turn. Right. Wow, he's like <laughs> getting all the colors that he needs. A Chromatic Lantern, that's great. Uh, I guess I'm going to respond what I consider. Gonna draw a card. Oh, Shieldred, that's solid. I'm just going to keep Shieldred on, on my hand. If I draw and land, this is going to be amazing. I did not draw the land. That's, that's almost good, but you know. Uh, oh, well, I can still play it. I'm just going to play Golden Lotus. Awesome. I'm going to play Mox Amber. I almost want to play that shielder, but I kind of want to play QTR shot. It's more fun. Let's see. I'm going to get a little spell book card. Demonic Tutor is solid, so I think I'm just going to get that instead. Let me see. Well, I can destroy his commander, so that will be interesting. Um, sure, let's get a closing grip. I got to discard a card. Ah, let's destroy Shadow, Shadow Verdict. Shadow's Verdict. It's not a solid. Attack. Awesome. Gonna get my Midnight Clock counter. <clears throat> Got a, a, cro a Crozen Grip, just in case, when he inevitably plays Ramos. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's mana screwed. Okay, this might be a, this might be a little bit of a quick game. I don't think it's gonna go much longer. Yeah, this is gonna be a little, little janky for him. Oh god, this is insane. Um, well, yeah, I'm just gonna Time Warp. I'm gonna get an extra turn here. He might have an answer. That's great. I hope he has an answer. That's awesome. He has a counter. That's good. That means I can play my card uncontested, which is great for me. Our actions determine the course of history. Um, I'm gonna attack. Gonna do corner creator. Let's submit zero. And my turn. He's looking for a way to, I guess, destroy my car, and I'm not sure. Or maybe my Rusko. Don't know. Okay. He played a mountain. But it's basically all the colors. Okay, awesome. He plays a Thunder Break. Regent. It's a flying dragon, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it becomes the target of spell ability, it deals 3 damage to the target player. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to wheel next turn, so I'm just going to go to my turn. Midnight Clock triggers. I drew 7 cards. Let's see what I get. Oh, this is going to be a little insane. Okay. Going to play a Drown Catacomb. Huh. Damn, I want to play that Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. I want to play a lot of things. Let's see what I play. Uh, create a copy. That seems solid of Target Creature Control. Kind of want to displace your kid and get a bunch of uh, Midnight Clocks up and running. I'm going to play this Blazer Kid at first. Let's get a Temporal Pilgrim. Let's see how much mana left over. I'm going to have two mana left over. Maybe, maybe not play it so quick. Mm, I want to play this and destroy something. Sure, let's start with this. Yep, he's going to blink. Rusko. Get it back up again. Get a life. Get a destroy your creature. I'm going to destroy the mini of the bike. I'm gonna get Karn. I'm gonna plus Karn. I'm gonna submit zero. I could have gotten the Midnight Clock, but it doesn't seem necessary right now. Uh, I have enough left over for to ferry to Pearl Pilgrim. I'm just gonna play him. I'm gonna blink. Rusko again. Just keep getting all those Midnight Clocks. Just add a value every turn, every second, every time I, I blink him. Um, I'm just gonna zero, draw a card. 
That's going to add a loyalty counter. And I'm going to pass a turn. Got to midnight clock, so up and running. One of them has two. The other one has three. So it's going to be two turns back to back where I draw seven cards. Um, yeah, this is a little insane, if you ask me. Oh, he's going to play Draconic Destiny. It's a great card. Um, gives him haste, flying, plus one, plus zero. I guess he's going to attack the Teferi <laughs> just to get rid of it. He is getting rid of the Teferi. It's a little mana screw, so I guess he's trying to buy his time to see what he can get away with. I don't know everything getting my Midnight Clock triggers. Awesome, I'm gonna get to look at his land hand and destroy uh take a non-creature non-land card from it and get it out of the way. Uh interesting. So he has a defabricate, which means he could have countered target artifact or enchantment, and he has a cancel. So he can cast neither. But I guess in this instance, I I'll take away the cancel. I'll deal with the counter eventually. I'm gonna put a snow cover land. Um I want to solve the equation. Gonna blink Rusko. Get another midnight clock. I'm gonna keep ramping over here. Let's see what spell I can get. I could discover the equation. I could get a Seagate Oracle. I can get a time warp. And get another turn of attacking. I think maybe a time time warp might be the fastest route for winning. Um Let's get. Let's see if I can cast everything. Oh, let's get a. Let's get the extra turn first up. I'm gonna target myself. I'm gonna keep blinking Rusko. Keep getting more midnight clocks on the field. I feel like this opponent is going to give up very quickly, because all that's happening here is bonkers and pretty insane. I'm gonna target a creature under control. I'm gonna make a copy of Rusko. I'm gonna blink Rusko. And he's gonna quit. Yeah, it's it's too insane. It's too powerful. It's too powerful. I'm, I'm glad their historic brawl is not like a competitive format. I mean, there's C brawl decks, like competitive brawl decks, but they got it's not an actual format. Because it's kind of insane. Fun thoughts. I uh, <laughs> yeah, Rusko Clockmaker is pretty busted. It's pretty busted. And I know as you guys saw by the gameplay. I know that I make a lot of mistakes during my gameplay. Uh, I know I can definitely do better, definitely play better and be more optimized in this deck. Um, but even with all my faults and all the mistakes where I was doing, I still won the majority of my matches. I think I played like around 10 games and I lost maybe once. And it was because I ha I played the Seagate Restoration against the Shieldred in the hopes of getting something of use because it, it came out of a Bowl of Citadel. And I cast this for seven, so I paid seven life and ten drew seven cards, so I lost twenty-one life in one go thanks to Shieldred. Uh Twenty-one? What was it? Wasn't more? Yeah, it was way more. What am I saying? It was two. It was uh tw twenty. Exactly, it was twenty-one. Exactly, twenty-one life. I lost twenty-one life in one turn, and I don't even know what I was looking for at that point, and I just ended up quitting. But um. I won basically all my matches, and if it wasn't because of that, it was because my opponent's got mana screw too, which kind of sucks. I don't like that when that happens. It, it doesn't, doesn't bode, bode well for good gameplay. But uh, yeah, no, the, the deck's very solid. It's very powerful. And yeah, I think I'm going to keep playing with it for a little bit more. So yeah, see you in the next one.